Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to Coffee and the Word. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that you're all doing well this morning. <clears throat> oh, that, that's good. I'm having the uh, Houston blend from uh, HEB. Love it. All right, well, let's get started this Sunday morning. Um, thoughts and prayers for my, my wife and my daughter. Uh, my daughter had to go into Houston uh, last night uh, doing a sleep study. Uh, she's on the autism spectrum, and she's not sleeping right, and the doctor wanted to see what's going on. And we've done all kinds of tests and everything, but they're doing a sleep study to see what her brain function is because she's, uh, she's just not sleeping well. Uh, she'll go to sleep, but then she'll wake up and be up for hours, and she just, her brain is just going a million miles an hour. So anyway, we'll see how that goes. So anyway, let's get started. This morning, we're going to start off. We have a reading uh, in Jeremiah, and then we're going to Psalms, uh, something in the Psalms, and then we're going to Proverbs, and then another reading in the Psalms, and then Hebrews, and then to the Gospel of Luke. Um, and actually, on the on the Proverbs reading, there's a, there's a reading in Sirach, and uh, that is in the um, the intertestamental period between the Old and the New Testament. The, I'm drawing a blank what that book is called, but it, it's it's in there. And Martin Luther has said it is good for reading and daily devotional, but not for for uh, like serious Bible study. So it's a short passage. I'll go ahead and read that as well. So. We'll throw that in there. So let's get started. Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 4 through 13 to start us off. So here we go. You know what? Let me turn it like this. Nope, about like this. All right. Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 4 through 13. And as always, may God bless the reading of his word. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, What wrong did your ancestors find in me, that they went far from me, and went after worthless things, and became worthless themselves? They did not say, Where is the Lord who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us in the wilderness, in the land of, of deserts and pits, in a land with drought and deep darkness, in a land that no one passes through, where no one lives? I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruits and its good things. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priest did not say, Where is the Lord? Those who handled the law did not know me. The rulers transgressed against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after things that did not profit. Therefore, once more, I accuse you, says the Lord, I accuse your children's children. Cross to the coast of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and examine, the, examine with care. See if there has ever been such a thing. Has a nation charged its gods, even though there are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for something that does not profit. Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked, be utterly desolate, says the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and dug, its, dug out cisterns for themselves, cracked cisterns that cannot hold water, that can hold no water. All right. All right. Uh, Psalm 81, uh, verse 1, and then 10 through 16. So, sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to, to the God of Jacob. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave them over to their stubborn hearts, to follow their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. Then I would quickly subdue their enemies, and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him and their doom would last forever. I would feed you with the finest of wheat, and with honey from the rock I would satisfy you. 
All right. The next reading is uh, Sirach chapter 10, verses 12 through 18. The beginning of human pride is to forsake the Lord. The heart has, has withdrawn from its maker. For the beginning of pride is sin, and the one who clings to it pours out abominations. Therefore, the Lord brings upon them unheard of calamities and destroys them completely. The Lord overthrows the thrones of rulers and enthrones the lowly in their place. The Lord plucks up the roots of the nations and plants the humble in their place. The Lord lays waste the lands of the nations and destroys them to the foundations of the earth. He removes some of them and destroys them and erases the memory of them from the earth. Pride was not created for human beings or violent anger for those born of women. Mm. All right. The Apocrypha. That's what that's called. So... All right, uh, the next reading is Proverbs 25, verses 6 and 7. So, do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of, of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of the noble, of a noble. Mm, that's true. Psalm 112, here we go. Praise the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord who greatly desire, delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. They rise in the darkness as a light for the upright. They are gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with those who deal generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. They will be remembered forever. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm, secure in the Lord. Their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. In the end, they will look, look in triumph on their foes. They have distributed freely. They have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn is exalted in honor. The wicked see it and are angry. They gnash their teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked comes to nothing. All right. Oh. The next reading, the epistle lesson this morning, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 through 8, and then 15 and 16. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have been entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison, as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured, as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornica fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money, and be content with what you have, for He has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of the lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. All right. The gospel text this morning. Uh, the gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verses 1 and then 7 through 14. And here we go. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of the leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guest chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor, in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both, both of you may come and say to you, Give this person your place. Then, in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. 
But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher, then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and when you, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. And this is the word of the Lord. And as always on Sunday, uh, the uh, Revised Common Lectionary offers a series of prayers, and I would like to share a few of those with you. So there's a thematic prayer, an intercessory prayer, and a scripture prayer, I believe is what it calls. Yeah. So here we go. Let us pray. God of power and justice, like Jeremiah, you weep over those who wander from you. Turn aside, turn aside to other gods and enter into chaos and destruction. By your tears and through your mercy, teach us your ways and write them on our hearts so that we may follow faithfully the path you show us. Amen. And then, God of mercy and healing, you who hear the cries of those in need, receive the petitions of your people that all who are troubled may know peace, comfort, and courage. And redeeming sustainer, visit your people and pour out your strength and courage upon us that we may hurry to make you, make you welcome not only in our concerns for others, but by serving them generously and faithfully in your name. Amen. And then, Almighty God, in your goodness you provide for the needy Remove from your people the pride of place and the pursuit of power that mocks humility. Open our hearts in generosity and justice to the neglected and lonely, that in showing esteem for others we may honor and please you. Through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Well, went a little long today, but that's all right. Um, so I hope and pray that you all have a fantastic day. I'm about to get up and run into Houston. So, uh Y'all have an awesome day, so be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And we will see you tomorrow on Coffee in the Word. God bless. Bye-bye.